G'day guys, it's Jim and welcome your face balls back to the dumbest video that I've ever created in RuneScape where we are going to turn off our run energy and we are going to walk from one side of the map to the other. So here we are over in the Lost Grove. We are on the furthest left-hand side of the map over here and we are going to walk the entire map and get ourselves all the way over to either here on Dragontooth Island or we're going to go to Anachronia because technically Anachronia is the furthest to the right. However, if I wanted to get to Anachronia, I stop at Varrock and then I walk across. Otherwise, I go through Kenefus and then I jump on a boat and I get to Dragontooth Island over there. So. I don't know which way I'm going to go, but we'll find out once we're going to get there. I'm going to zig wiggle my way all the way across. So we're going to go through, uh, obviously we've got the Ardoin area. We've got Yanil. We're going to just zig, 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 go all the way through and wiggle our way across and make our way to the end destination. So this is an adventure that is the dumbest thing that I've ever done. I have paused my double XP, but we're still wasting time doing this anyway. And let's continue. We're gonna walk over here from the Lost Grove. Now, I have not done anything over here before. The Lost Grove is new content to me. I've done a quest, actually. I do, I do lie, I've done one thing. I've done a quest, which took us over here for a little bit, which was the recent quest uh, in the game. Now, we have these vine creatures. So all the graphics in this area a new like these are new modern graphics i don't know when this content came out but it's very new in contrast to like the other stuff we're gonna see on this walk so beautiful place it's very enchanted looking the music is beautiful while we're over here but it's basically this giant forest and i'm pretty sure solak or one of the bosses is in this area as well haven't done that boss but i know that there is a boss in this area that you can go and check out but basically i think it's just like a slayer area and then the boss beautiful big old enchanted rock with like this i don't know misty moonlight kind of like a werewolf would come out at you or a vampire very twilighty but the lighting in this game can we talk about the lighting for a second it has been updated to be so beautiful the global illumination look at that like as my character walks up to the light look at the light fading off the back of it look at it fading into the front of it as we get closer to the light source they have done a phenomenal job with the lighting over the last two years it looks bloody beautiful especially in like the new areas the new areas does like really show the lighting because all of the textures have concaves and they're not flat they're not just like pure pixelated uh textures beautiful bridge here made with all the vines of uh probably dead groots let's be real they're probably like dead groots that they're made out of so it's a little bit morbid but hey serves a purpose we've got falling leaves coming at us what a beautiful location. I'm going to have to spend some more time here in the Lost Grove and check this place out. But for now, we have got places to be, other people to see. But uh, Lost Grove, 10 out of 10, IGN, beautiful, bloody place. Let's teleport out of here. Now, this teleport isn't going to take us directly to the far left of the map. We're going to be closer, a little bit to the right. We're just basically under the swamp right now. So we're still on the far left of the map, but that teleport takes us here to the Poison Waste where we can now continue our journey around Castle Wars, which is an old place that I think is dead content other than people going for comp cape. Uh, really need to bring back the mini games or make new mini games, Jagex. Like that should be a priority for the next couple of years. Make mini games great again. Seriously, put it on a t-shirt. Make mini games, mini games, mini, mini games, that one, great again. So we're walking. I, I don't know if you guys realize this. We're walking across the map. We're not runting, runting, running, good English. And we're not sprinting. That's the same as running, Jim. Um, surging. That's the word I'm looking for. We're not surging. We are just walking our way across. There's a cave over there. Guys, let me know if that's part of the game. Like, well, it is part of the game. Part of a quest line or something like that. We've got the incandescent energy where everyone... Whoa. What the hell's the water? The water's tripping balls. Hold on. Let's have a look. So it's green water there. And then blue uh, water in the poison swamp. How's that work? I don't know. But yeah, look at this cave. There's a cave around the corner over here and it's on the back of castle walls. I've never seen it before. Is it a pipe? Is it like a sewer pipe? Hold on. Let me go free cam. Maybe this is the, the drain for all of the blood, sweat and tears from everyone in castle walls as well. Is it a drain or a cave? Sewer. Yeah, I think it's like a sewer. Interesting. Like all the toxic waste comes out. Is castle walls run on nuclear energy? I have no idea. But... I've never noticed that cave there before. Anyway, let's continue. Because, yeah, we're going to see some older graphics. We're going to see some newer graphics. We're going to see a lot of things in this game today. Um, as we walk across, we have no defined path. We can just zig wiggle our way across. Look at the shadow. 
how cool is that? Like, I'm on ultra graphics, obviously, so it won't be the same for everyone if you're on lower graphics, but I don't know. I'm just finding little details of the game that are so beautiful. Like, when you're walking across that exact shadow of your character, that might sound dumb to people who are, like, young and that's a thing in video games, but when I was growing up, you had a block. You had a rectangle as your shadow. I'm sure a lot of people can agree with me that, like, e even a shadow that, like, moved half as decent as what you do was really rare in video games and now it's even got the cape that moves it's like a full-on reflected shadow and talking about the reflections in this game beautiful absolutely beautiful anyway let's continue we've got the ogres over here so this is like older graphics right because this area hasn't been touched the area down there where the lost grove has been touched recently i think it was like in the archaeology update they've put the the what's the gods they got zaros saradomian Armadil and Bandos. Yeah, all the Bandos stuff, the Warforge, that's it. That was down in that area. So they've touched that up a little bit down there, but not really here. This is still all of the, not old graphics, but I think they're like 2010 graphics, somewhere around there. So they're not the oldest in the game, but they are like 2010, 2011. HD OS is what I think this area was created around. Anyway, we've got a little bit of water, got a little bit of ponds, and in the water we do have reflections, which is really nice as well. But yeah, the character models, especially for here, just haven't aged as well. What I do like is the global illumination does add a bit more depth to these old graphics. Like if we didn't have the lighting that we do now, this area does start to look a bit dated, but because of the shading and the lights and how they're going onto the objects and casting the shadows, it does look better than the textures actually are. It's a bit of a, um, what do they call that? Optical illusion. A bit of an optical illusion. Like if we go down here, there's some old textures. Like see the ogres over here with the hats and everything like that. You will see like these zombie ogres, which is the zogas from the quest line. Um, these would be really ancient down here. So yeah, that one's not too bad, but the skeleton one is, yeah, they're pretty old and ancient as you can see clumping around, moving around, but you know what? Still holds up. Again, the lighting gives it that extra little bit of uh, definition. I wouldn't call it high definition, but it definitely has some sort of definition. So we're going to go around to castle walls over here and we'll follow the river. Let's follow the river for a little bit and then we'll cross over to Yanil. We'll go around the back of Trinome Village up to Ardoin. We're just going to zig wiggle. That's what I said before. We'll zig wiggle our way across because it's no fun just going in a straight line while we're doing this uh, challenge. It's, uh, I mean, the challenge really isn't a challenge. It's just me exploring the game, which as you guys seen in the uh, million dollar GP from shops video, I like to explore things now. After I've maxed twice, it's kind of what I do in the game is I just like to find things and explore. Look at the reflections here. You've got my character reflected down in the bottom of the water. And like, it's a live reflection as he walks along. Like this is RuneScape. Like if you're an old school player like me, and you see this in RuneScape, it just blows your mind to think that this is technically the same game as when we grew up. It's on a new engine and everything like that, but like the fundamentals are still here. It's like a remake, a HD remake of the game, which is only going to get better when they remake it on Unreal Engine, which is inevitable. They have to be remaking RuneScape on Unreal Engine or making RuneScape 4 on Unreal Legend. It, it has to be in the works. They've got jobs for content developers on Unreal galore, uh, on an MMORPG on their website. So it has to be in the works. I'm not confirming it myself because um, I have no other information than that, but it's just pure spec speculation. But from what I can see, it has to be in the works. It's from all of the, the jobs they've been posting. There is a bear. There is a bear in bear. Where is that from? Play school. My child brain just came out and remembered songs from my youth. Anyway, we'll go around the back of Trino Village right now. So we've got another ogre, we've got an imp, we've got the terror birds. Terror birds were an interesting concept because when the um, tetra compasses came out, I thought instantly that the tetra compass looked like a terror bird, which a lot of people seem to agree with me. Can we go through this way or do I have to go back into your nil? I think I have to go back into your nil. Okay. So there's a fairy ring. Yeah. Okay. We're going through your nil and we'll pop out the other side and do it that way. Fairy ring needs updating as well. That would be nice because they're such a integral part to the game. Obviously, clue scroll users use them. Um, that's very useful in quests and everything like that. So it'd be nice to see them get a little bit of a graphics update. It wouldn't be too hard, I don't think, for them to upgrade the graphics on that. But I digress. 
The musicians, RIP, don't use them anymore because of lodestones, but I remember when the musicians were added to the game. They were a really good upgrade because obviously agility levels were low back then and you always ran out of puff. So having the uh, musicians, especially when you're running from Sears up to Premnik, that was a really good musician to have and an absolute great musician. Yanil is a bit on the uh, dated side for a big town, for a big town in RuneScape, this uh, area start to look a little bit on the dated side. I don't know what you would call this um, art style, like architecturally, architecturally art style. I don't know what it's called, like that whole look of the boards, like the beams, and then it's like, I don't know what it's even made of, like hay or something like that. If you guys know what that is, please let me know because it's in a lot of old video games and I don't know the name of that architire, architect, architectural style. Jesus, English is hard today. Okay, we're going through Yanil, trip down memory lane, and I think we're approaching Port Hazard. Do you pronounce the K in that? I'm not sure. I'm going to call it Hazard because I think it's Kazard, but I'll pronounce the H instead. What sort of runes do we have here? Rune? Has there always been Runite rocks here? Maybe. Actually, now that I think about it, I think there has been Runite here when I was young and I remember trying to find Rune, but I don't remember there being that many. No. No, these weren't here. Rune was in the wilderness and stuff like that. I don't think these were here. Interesting. Okay, because Runite is like level 50 now or something, isn't it? They've changed it. The, the mining smithing rework, so they've changed it. This building here is where you first fight your first Marjorat. Uh... Pretty cool quest line. The graphics are still janky and old if you do that quest. Um, but yeah, you basically go in here, you go into this arena. It's like a very low level quest, which I don't understand the whole idea of that. Low level quests don't make sense in members areas because most of the time a free to play person will become a member after trialing the game. And by that point, they're probably level 30 or 40 or 50. So these old quests just don't really have a place in the game anymore, which is really upsetting, but it is what it is. So we're going to go around the back of the uh, Monk's Party Room. Uh, if you guys haven't done this before, I was on Leagues, RuneScape Leagues. I don't see where that shadow is coming from. Okay. Oh, it's the Puff of Smoke. Right, the Puff of Smoke is getting shadows. <gasps> the sun is moving. We're in a new skybox, guys. How beautiful. So here we are, the Monk's Party Room. This is like basically the quest that you want to do when you're doing leagues to instantly get to 15 woodcutting, I think it is, on leagues or something like that. You get mad woodcutting XP from doing this um, Monk's Friend quest, I think it's called. Really easy, really quick, and I can't wait for leagues on old school again. That was so bloody fun. RuneScape old school leagues. If you guys haven't tried it, give it a go. It is, it's a great time. I like being, it's a server that doesn't last forever. You've got a bit more XP. You get perks as you're going along to boost rates and everything like that. It's kind of like a official RuneScape private server. Put it that way. It's got like private server elements that just makes the game fun. But it's legal private server, if that makes sense. So it's really, really cool. And it's a nice challenge. It's a nice change in the way RuneScape is because it gets you to think outside the box of how you're going to train. Okay, so this building here is the experiment building. I don't know if you guys have ever seen this one before in a quest or anything like that. This is an old quest as well. But if we go into this building, as I said, I'm walking across the map. I'm going to explore areas in this map just to go and find things. So we're going to go down here. And this is the experimental building. I don't know if you guys have ever seen the monster down here. The Casper the Ghost looking thing. Here you go. So it's a big old Casper the Ghost looking thing. Jagex, make this as like a summon. Make it a pet or something like that because I really do like the design of this creature it just needs to be obviously updated but like it's such a unique thing and it just sits down here doing nothing so if we could add this back into the game and give it purpose give it new life make it a mini boss or something like that a tutorial boss maybe it's a boss that teaches you mechanics in the game sort of like arc glacial but like maybe have quick time events like where you you know the game stops and you have to press the button to continue to really sink in what those abilities and buttons do i've always wanted that for runescape quick time stop effects to train mechanics i feel like that's a good way to learn anyway getting on different topics here let's leave this house and leave casper the ghost down below uh we're gonna go over to the left here and go around this idle head thing i think this is the one with vines i haven't done many of those i remember chopping vines once on like max or something like that but i don't recall doing it much at all 
I don't even know if that's the one that you chop vines on. Anyway, we're going to go through Arduin. I pronounced it as Ardugon when I was a kid. Ardugan, because it's just how it's spelt is how I pronounced it. But Arduin, beautiful town, beautiful town. This was a place that we all trained thieving in back in the day. And what else was this place useful for? I think we used the banks over here quite a bit. There was a mining area for coal, if I recall. Um, what else was here? I don't recall. I, I think it was basically Plague City is what we're all getting this place through at the end of the day was trying to get Plague City. And then you'd also come over here for the banks and the thieving was a big thing in this town as well. And we've got the general store in here. I don't know what they sell. I should have checked that in my uh, other video that I did where I was trying to make a million GP. But that being said, I can always do that video again and try different stalls. This guy's got a huge monocle on his eye. Um, very, very big monocle. But look at this. This place reminds me so much of player-owned houses and what it could be. Like, I wish, I wish, I wish player-owned houses, even if they can't bring them to the main game, if they were server-based, and you could have up to say 20 neighbors on your little server, like the clans world, right? Like the clans worlds. And you can have 20 neighbors. You can choose who your neighbors are. You can all agree to be on the server and blah, blah, blah. But you can see the other person's house. You can see them building and upgrading the other person's house. That would be really cool to be able to do that, to have a little community with your friends. And in that building skill in construction, they can upgrade it. So like you can upgrade the town that you guys all live in. You can build roads, you could build infrastructure, you could build skilling stations. And I think that would be a really nice addition to construction um, and give more of a community aspect to it as well, where there's like a, a community upkeep that we can do together to maintain our town and make sure that it stays afloat. And maybe our town, you know, getting ambitious, can have NPCs that walk around and people who visit the town and people who are like traders who come to the town with different items. But I don't know, just thinking outside the box here. We've just gone through the player-owned farms. Great update. We've got the Storm Guard. That's it, Storm Guard over here, the Armadil excavation site. Now, this place over here is actually pretty cool because this is where you make battle staffs. I used that in old school, I believe. Was it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure it was old school where I'm... No. Yes? Iron Man. Because I have to use that for Iron Man to make battle staffs. I remember using it for something like that. And then behind Sears, Sears is like the woodcutting village, if I recall. Back in the day, because it had the magic trees, it had the yew trees, and more importantly, it had the maple trees. And it was a bank right next to it. So you would come here, you would get all of your wood, and then you would fletch it. That's how I got 99 fletching was in this town. Got 99 fletching in this town. First 99. It was a beautiful time. Pre-GE. Pre-GE, think about that. And so we had that all going on here. We'll do it at the bank over here. And fletching was a pretty respectable skill back then. It was pretty respectable because you used to go and take your arrows. You used to go stand outside the bank in Varrock and you used to say, hey, I've got arrows to sell. And you used to make a fair bit of GP because all the ranging people obviously need arrows. Camelot. Camelot is a beautiful place We've got the quest line for Excalibur over here. If you guys haven't got Excalibur, it is a beautiful sword. I have it on me right now, actually. What it does is it heals you over time. Uh, I think if you upgrade it the whole way, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's like to 70% of your health or something like that, or is it 40? I don't know, one or the other. 40%, let's just go with that, of your full health over a minute or something like that. It's basically saving you food. It's got a cooldown on it, so you can't just keep spamming it, but it's a very useful weapon, especially if you're doing Slayer and you don't want to take a bunch of food. You can just use Excalibur, keep healing yourself once every, like, five minutes if you need to, and just, yeah, a needed upgrade. If you don't have it yet, go and get it. That's Excalibur. We are here in... Where are we? Atherby. Atherby. Beautiful place, beautiful fishing village. As you can see, we've got all of the uh, tuna hanging up. We've got salmon. We have got trout on here as well. We have got, I don't know what that is. What is this fish? If you guys know what this fish is, let me know. The red one right here. I don't know what that fish is. Anyway, beautiful little village. Came down here to get my fletching cape back in the day. You buy it from the fletching shop down here. Nice place to hang out. It's also a place where a lot of people did their fishing because it was close to a bank. It's not the closest to a bank. So I think back in the day, we used to go to Shiloh Village. That was like the closest to a bank that we used to do. But 
still, it was a nice place to hang out. And they've done a bit to it over the years. It used to be a flat area. Like, it never used to have all of these, like, mountainy little things coming off it. It was a very flat area. So they've done a little bit to it. Had a graphics update. It looks phenomenal. Then, obviously, now we've got these uh, water obelisk over here to charge your water orbs. We've got a palm tree that I haven't checked the health of. We can go and do that. And then we're going to go make our way up White Wolf Mountain. If you guys remember Mad Max. Oh, my God. That is beautiful. Hold on. Let me get up here and just... Uh, have a peek back at Canifus, not Canifus, Hathraby. Let's have a peek. Oh my god, that is beautiful. That is beautiful. Do they call it the peak of a mountain because you're having a peek at like the view around it or is peak? I don't know, maybe peak is a word that means something else. It's like if you peek at something, it means like you're taking a little look at something, you're having a little squeeze. But uh, peak of a mountain as well is like the top, right? So I don't know how that happens. I don't know how that word works. Anyway, we're going to go through White Wolf Mountain. I'm just ranting right now. Beautiful mountain. Got updated textures over the years because it's probably like really close to the entry area for the game. So they want to make the game look pretty when you first start off. And then they're like, oh, here's this other place. It's called Edgeville. It hasn't been touched in 50 years. Looks, <laughs> looks great. Which I think they've touched it a little bit in the wilderness update. A couple of things seem different. Anyway, let's go around the corner. Now, getting over White Wolf Mountain is a challenge for some people when they're starting off because they go down these trap doors and they end up finding the ice queen and end up dying oh what a view what a view okay so where are we that would be Berthorpe, right so there's Berthorpe castle no that would be the champions guild champions guild i don't know the one where you get the dragon dagger right so this is the one where you get the dragon dagger and then okay you run through that gap there in the broken wall you go through the pass then you go around the back then you go over that mountain and then god wall's dungeon is somewhere over there God Wars Dungeon somewhere over there. Over to the left of us, I think that is the manor. The murder house manor. And then you go over to um, Kremnik, right? I've never been up on top of this mountain. I wonder if there's an achievement for that. I don't think I've ever been up the tippy top of this mountain before. Anyway, beautiful view. Absolutely stunning. Gorgeous view. I mean, they are just a bunch of rocks over there, but still, nevertheless, being able to see that far is a amazing thing in runescape because if you guys know the old school way of the view distance it used to just be black you used to look over a mountain and just be like this big black wall that you can't see past here we go we are in berthop the twin cities we got berthop up top taverly down the bottom and no yak track that's weird usually you come down here and there's like a yak track going on but anyway this is where you start your adventure in runescape now not lumbridge berthop the first city here in runescape Gorgeous place, like, I have to admit, for a starting location, it's a pretty beautiful town to start off in and see everything that's going on. Like, all of your skill training areas are here to start off with to learn your craft. You've even got a Slayer Master here, which I don't think that Slayer Master's always been here, has he? I think they brought that person in for the skilling update to this area because this yeah this place never used to have half of the stuff that it has now and the whole layout was completely different i think they've even moved this the um altar i think the altar they moved pretty early on when they're doing the upgrades to this place because remember in 2008 i think this place went through an upgrade as well because they had to introduce the summoning skill which brought in pickup sticks and all that stuff and you got a cave here which is the slayer cave entrance starting out look at the freaking reflections in the water so beautiful i think our skybox changed again Did our skybox change again it feels more pinkish and like afternoony yeah okay here we go skybox changing once again people doing summoning oh wait yeah it's double xp i was wondering why are people doing summoning double xp that is why beautiful pet beautiful pet right there actually i didn't even summon my pet how dare i Oh well, let's just go through this uh, door. If you were a free-to-play player back in the day, these doors are very nostalgic. This was the gateway to members. Back in the day, this was the gateway to members. It was a very, very, very nostalgic thing to do. Why is there a bear up here? Has there always been a bear up near the goblins? I don't remember there being a bear up here because we've got the, um, the Zemrak temple over here as well it's very squished together as if these goblins right especially these goblins these goblins in particular have a very fond allegiance to bandos and it's just very funny and ironic that there's a monk chapter 
to uh, Zemrak, literally right beside him. So there's two god allegiances, like, literally right beside each other. Always found that a bit funny. Then we've got the princess up here, obviously. I think a little bit based on uh, Cinderella and Princess Peach from Mario. Then we go down into the death site of Bandos, RIP. RIP Bandos. I wasn't here for that fight. Um, I missed that battle. I wasn't here for the fight of Bandos and Armadil. I was here for Zamorak and Saradomin, but yeah, I guess I just really wasn't playing when Bandos fought Armadil. So if you guys did play, let me know in the comments below. How did that play out for you? Was it fun? Do you think it was good content or was it a bad time? Because I don't know. I don't think Bandos really stood a chance against Armadil considering the AGS was like this amazing, amazing uh, bit of equipment. So... I don't think it ever stood a chance. I think people were aligned to Armadil because of the armor, because of the sword, and it was just never going to work out. And Bandos was made to be like kind of a dickhead in the um, in the story as well. So I think Armadil was always going to win that fight. Everyone was going to align with him. That's okay. Got the Dwarf Cannon and the Invention Guild over here. Beautiful update to the game, the Invention Guild. And the Dwarf Cannon has a nice upgrade, a golden texture that you can get to it as well. In leagues, I, get, I keep referencing leagues, but in leagues, we got an upgrade to that as well. So if you did leagues, you now have a purple, blue, like glowing cannon, which looks really, really cool. Old man over here with an Orichalc and pickaxe by the looks of it. Beautiful. Over to Edgeville, which is new updates, I think. Slightly. I think they might have done something with the new wilderness update over here, but Lord Cabbage, what's his name? Primus? I don't know, Cabus Prime? Something Prime, I don't remember. But there is a god in-game, if you guys don't know, which is a cabbage. It's a joke from the original creators, Andrew and Paul Gower, who created a cabbage that, um, yeah, Braska Prime, I think that's it, who is a cabbage. Yeah, there's a god who is a cabbage, plays a role in the game, and you see it pop up every now and again. Black Knight's Castle, freaking epic looking, gorgeous castle absolutely gorgeous i don't know if that got a touch with the wilderness update probably did i'm just looking at it probably did get an update from the looks of it but beautiful looking castle nevertheless we've got the mugger over here we're gonna have to start making our choice aren't we we're gonna have to choose if we're gonna go to anachronia or we're gonna go to uh Canifus. i get the feeling that i might do Canifus. Canifus feels like the right choice i know anachronia is technically further on the map but it seems like I'm missing a lot of the map by teleporting to Anachronia. I, I mean, we could always technically use a fast travel at the end. I feel like that might be something we could do. Let's walk to Canifus. We'll catch the boat if we can. I might need my Ghost Speak amulet. Let's quickly duck through Varrock. We'll walk through Varrock and we'll go get our Ghost Speak amulet because I think I might need it to talk to the person at the boat by memory. Let's go over here and we'll grab it. One second, guys. So, I hope I have it in my bank. God, this place looks cool. 300 million RuneScape accounts. I'm going to hit doubt hard. Like, I'm hitting the doubt button hard on that because it was like 20 million accounts in a day that was created um, to do that. Ghost. Go speak. There we go. Let's put that on. Yeah, it was like 280 million and then a day later, 300 million. I, I'm going to hit doubt on that because, yeah, a lot of them must be um, bots or alt accounts or something like that because it, there's definitely 100 million accounts and 20 million accounts in the last day. <sighs> it's cool to see everyone here. It's cool to see everyone here. Like... Everyone doing their double XP skilling. It's a good event to bring people together. Double XP might be controversial because it's like making the game easy, quote unquote. But it's a good event to bring people together is what I like about it. So we'll go around Varrock Castle. There is a quest here which is really annoying. I forget the name of it. It's like Garden something. Garden of Tranquil, I think. Something like that. It's an annoying quest because it's one of the only quests in the game that like makes you physically wait 30 minutes or an hour or something while your plants grow and then you have to come back to it later and continue the quest. 
it caught me off guard when I was doing a speed run once and yeah it completely ruined it because I'm like oh yeah I can get through this quest really really fast anyway I think the best idea if you're doing that one is to go do other quests while you're waiting um, and then you come back to it but yeah if you're planning to just do that one quest and I think it's a requirement for something there's something important if I remember that you need to do that quest for maybe the um sectors whatever they're called the green sectors um that you need for the farming I think maybe it might be a requirement for that but there is definitely something it's used for and I remember waiting and waiting and waiting and being like this is annoying so if you are going to do that quest make sure that you have something else lined up so that you can go through that here's what we'll do we'll go through all right let's go through the archaeology oh I did not mean to do that I just accidentally clicked the knight um let's go through the archaeology area that way we go past the boat to Anacronia anyway so I can show you the boat that goes to Anacronia and then we can walk through this area and go through Canifus that way because I think at least we get to see the boat you can already see it in the background that is the boat that takes you to Anacronia if you guys don't know how to get there and you've never been there the first time that boat over there will take you to Anacronia so now we're going to walk past the city of Centiston uh, excavation site and we've got the archaeologist here just chilling on the outside that was a good bit of content I really really did enjoy that it doesn't make sense how this is under that mansion like in terms of um, geography it does not make sense how that whole city has been sitting under this mansion considering that mansion goes down like six stories underground or whatever it was in the quest logic doesn't make sense but it's still a pretty cool update and things are now getting spooky look at the draw distance like you can see the abyssal portal up on top of the slayer tower from all the way down here gotta love when you draw distance is like max because it just gives different perspective to the game like the game just feels so much bigger in a way when you can get that depth of how far away things really are i mean like we could zoom in really close i do wish this game had a first person mode a toggleable first person mode that would be freaking awesome maybe i should make that a mod for rune light in old school anyway we're gonna go through here we're gonna go through the uh mollism whatever it's called Malism? i don't know that one mausoleum i think and we'll go down underneath pretty iconic quest i don't think you need to do this quest anymore to get through i think you need to kill the guard dog and that's it so they've changed it i believe someone was telling me that they've changed it you don't need to do the quest to get through but if you do do the quest um remember you can get a golden tinder box from here you can get a golden tinder box or you can get a golden needle a golden item from one of these things during that quest and you can keep it so just remember that if you guys are ever coming through and doing the quest i forget the name of the quest but um whatever one it is that you need to get through we'll go through the holy barrier into the world of edifice now i've recently done the vampire quest line i haven't touched anything questy in canifus in years since i was a kid but i've recently done the vampire quest line and it is one of the best quest lines in the game i would say it's like top three top three quest lines in the game elder god wars is obviously number one but uh, yeah, the vampire quest line, I would say, is a close second or third. Both of them are really, really bloody good. Quite enjoyed it. And I don't know what, why I didn't do it earlier. Oh, look at the global illumination, guys. Look at that. That is beautiful. The way that it just lights up your character as you go close to it and stuff. Like these little things in the game that they've done over the last two years with the lighting just make it so bloody beautiful this game is absolutely beautiful look slayer tower in the background you've got the church of sarodomin i think it is cathedral sarodomin which is <coughs> spoiler not sarodomin imposters we've got frankenstein's frankenstein frankenstein whatever his name was castle up here good quest as well great quest the whole quest revolving charos is a amazing quest line uh, if you guys haven't done it, not going to spoil anything through that quest line. But yeah, this this one up here where you get the Ring of Charos is really, 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 really good. You guys should definitely do that quest line or just watch someone else do a quest on it. Because if you guys don't like questing, you can always watch someone else do it. Um, especially if they're narrating it and reading out. That is also good. So we'll go down the other side to the farming patch. 
Here is the swamp with all of the vampires and stuff in the forest. If you go out there with food, I think the ghosts take your food, so you better be careful when you do have food out there, but that's okay. There's the memorial. We'll walk through past the farming patch, which I haven't touched in about a year now. It's been ages since I've actually done a farming run on this account. I just get lazy. I just get really, really lazy. This is the boat where you have to change the color of the die, I believe. You go up on the top, and there's a flag, and then you have to... Yeah, you have to paint the boat. You have to paint the sails of the flag to the same color. This place seems really spooky, doesn't it? Like the, the sound of the audio and everything. Very scary. The skybox, though, I think is a bit bright. I feel like this is, this is a bright skybox for this area. I would have done something else. I don't know if this is the default skybox, which is Patadermis for this area. No. See, this one looks a little bit more creepy. This skybox with the green, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. Do I have Ecto tokens? That would be a good question. Can I even get into this place? Ask the energy barrier. Yes, I can. Because I've done the quest, I can get free entry, I believe. We're going to walk over through this town. Beautiful town with, like, a couple humans in it. Just imagine, like, this human being here. If he doesn't have a ghost speak amulet, he's in there alone. Well, thinks he's alone. Now, to get to the island that we need to go to, I don't remember if it's this boat or the other boat. I think it might be this boat down here, if I recall. If we go down to the ghost captain in his tiny, tiny, tiny little boat down here, we will be able to get onto Dragontooth Island, where there is a quest that I haven't done that explores more of this island. I do need to do that quest. Here we go. We are in Dragontooth Island, and I don't know how far west, east. Where are we going? East. I don't know how far east we can walk. I feel like this is more east on this island over here. Maybe? No, I don't think so. I think this island is the more eastiest east that we can get to. Let's keep walking over here. Is this the most eastiest east? I think it is. Okay, so we've got to the most east point, I think. Yes. Yes. Okay, so we're on the most east point. Point, point, point. We have walked from the Lost Grove over the entire map. So we've zig wiggled our way the whole way across the entire map to make it to this point here, which is technically, I think mostly harmless actually sticks out a little bit more, but I digress. Here we go. Dragon Tooth Island. And I think this is where we are going to do a little bit of magicry. And we're just going to teleport over to Anachronia because we've made it to technically the far farthest east that we can get to through a boat. And now we're going to teleport to Anachronia and make our way to the furthest east point of Anachronia that we can get to. I think it's not even safe for me to do this in Anachronia. I think it's a deadly. I don't even know how to get there. Hold on. How do we get there? And we exit here and then we go, we exit here, go, da -da 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 -da, go across there and up north. Okay. So we go this way. I think. Can we get out of Anachronia this way? No. Well, not Anachronia, but the castle. This, where does this go? I have not walked out of this place other than, like, for the agility course. So this is going to be a lesson learned. Again, look at the skybox in this area. So bright and just sunny and beautiful. Not the best skybox for the area, though. I think Dawn. Dawn suits this place really well. So if you haven't seen Dawn, this is the skybox for Dawn. Look at that. I think this just looks incredible with Dawn. This is my favorite one for this area. Um, just gives it that extra little bit of like God rays that come through the plants and everything. Really, really nice. Or, I mean, if you wanted to, you can go to, where is it? It is uh, Dusk. If you want some moody elements, see? So now it's like a spooky forest. But preferably, I do prefer Dawn. But that's okay. We will turn the skybox off. We'll keep it as intentional the way that it was designed to be and leave it at that. So if we go up here, can we get down? Let me get down from up here. I don't know where I'm going in Anachronia. I am always lost. We started in the Lost Grove and we ended lost in Anachronia. Go figure. But there has to be a way down. If I click down there, can we get down there? No, it's not going to path us down there. Okay. Well... I will just continue straight and explore. 
because it's a beautiful place. Like the graphics for the leaves and the foliage in this area. Um, a waterfall that actually works. Wow. If you guys have seen the waterfall out in the, uh, well, lava fall out in the wilderness, it doesn't even bloody move. It's just a static texture, which is dumb. Uh, there's a lot of things in the wilderness update that are just like, they should have been fixed. Like, it's not asking too much for these other things to be fixed. Stay tuned for the video. Stay tuned for the video. It's coming. There's there's a fair few things with the wilderness that uh, just need a little bit of touching up, in my opinion. And I will put my thoughts and opinions on that in a video as well. So, can we even get out of here? Or is this a dead end? I think this is a dead end. So, we are going to now teleport back and start again. That is a dead end. But it's nice to know that... Um, yeah, that area exists. I've never been this way before. How many people have been lost in Anachronia? Let's be real. Surely a lot of people have been lost in Anachronia and not just me. It's a difficult place to traverse for the first time. Because it's very levelly. Like there's lots of different levels to it. Lots of up and downs. And I do always find myself getting lost. Even when I'm just trying to find things such as like when... Uh, archaeology came out and you're trying to find the different archaeology sites for the first time i did really screw up a couple of times and had to fast travel back and start again because it's again like this uh height difference you think that you can get somewhere and then you can't find a staircase down to it and that's what really screwed me up was doing that sort of thing but i think if we cross this vine up here we should be able to get where we need to go hopefully this agility course will go past the area that we're trying to get to. I don't know if we can get down from it though, but I know it does go near that area that we're trying to get to. So we'll just wiggle our way across the bridge. There is another thing in the wilderness that I found, which is like an agility course that doesn't make sense. Again, I'm going to have to make the video on it. Got the Herbie Werbies. Yeah, okay, so we can't get up to the big game hunter from here. Uh, we're going to have to walk our way around the agility course and wait for an opening. But that's okay. We're going in the right direction. That's all that matters. We're going in the right direction and we will eventually get there. We will traverse the cliff face. This is probably going to be the slowest ever agility lap on record, which I think it does time out. I think I've tried to do the slowest agility ra uh, round ever and it did time out on me. Up across the tree lovely man i'm trying to not hit surge i've got like this latent thing from when i did agility twice now i've done 99 agility twice um not to surge around this track okay so we can go up to where the dinosaur is this is the uh landing area isn't it this is where you first come to anachronia and this is where it takes you to start off with so if we go up here and we skedaddle our way through here and then this way. I think I see a path. I think I see a path. So hopefully, fingers crossed, this goes the right way. So if we go this way, we go down. And that wraps around the river. So we want to go back this way. And down here. So that we can follow along the riverbed. We're getting there. We're pathing our way. This is where Thok, I think, hit something. Where Thok was doing some stuff in that early mission when he first came here. We've got the new arrows over here too. I forgot about that. Anachronia is useful again for the um, the new arrows. This flower that's moving down here, the Herbie Werby flower. Beautiful reflections once again. This place reminds me of Aya. Really does. Really, really, really reminds me of Aya. If you guys don't know where Aya is, it is an amazingly beautiful place that is in uh, the new quest line. So I'm not going to spoil anything for the Elder God Wars, but you will find Aya in the Elder God Wars quest line. Beautiful place. Look at these trees. So bloody huge. Coconut trees, right? Because they've got big coconuts? Must be. Right, we've got more Zygomites over here. Is that what they are? Zygomites? I remember. Can't remember. Haven't really touched that much. The first time I did Herbie Werby, my clan members told me the wrong colors that I had to choose and I didn't get any points and wasted my time. It was fun. Okay, do we have to go up? I feel like we have to go up to cross. Does it go up here? Yes. Okay, I feel like we can go up here. 
because Jadinkos, um, when I was doing my hunter training, I had a bunch of protein traps and I was using my protein traps to get the Jadinkos, but the ones that were just off to the uh, left near Carapax lab in Anachronia, that's where I was doing the Jadinkos was over there. I know there's ones that are like higher levels that you can get. I think they're in like the top north of the map, but these ones were good enough and there was never anyone there on double XP. So I just used those ones instead. But yeah, I've never really done any of the other Janinko training. And because I think they need certain requirements, like they need certain items to attract them, right? So I haven't done that one much either. Uh, haven't done these plants. I haven't done much Slayer over here. So there's a lot of content in two places that I still have to check out, which is Anachronia. I still have to do a lot of the Big Game Hunter. I still have to do a lot of the Slayer over here. And the Lost Grove, where I've done none of the content. So we're going to have to do that one as well, eventually, in the future. I don't know where the music went for this area, but uh, we're just going to enjoy the sounds of the birds and the bees. There we go. The music's kicked back in. We're still making our way east. We're getting there. And from here, the most easty part is back here behind us. So we need to make our way here. That way so how do we cross over to that side that's what we're gonna find we're gonna find somewhere that can cross us over i see a vine up on top i think that might be where we're gonna head we're gonna head to the vine and see if that can cross us over to there because yeah if we're looking at that that vine is heading directly in the direction we want to go if that wraps around yep we can't cross that so yeah i think the vine is definitely the way that we want to go we want to go up the hill and we can climb to the top and see it's been fun doing this it has like it's obviously a huge waste of time um but it's fun to see the world you know and actually just see the world for no other reason like if you've usually got to go somewhere you're usually training something or you're money making or you're doing a quest or something like that but like literally just taking the time to go and explore the world is something i don't think many people do so it's fun to go and do this thing and i lose my footing with 99 agility i lose my footing i'm not wearing anything other than the weapons that i'm carrying so i'm still pretty light and i lose my footing down we go lovely so now we've crossed over and we cross over this one and that should with a should a hard should take us to the place that we want to go so if we cross over here we go up and we traverse this vine clicking the vines by the way when you're doing agility and zoomed all the way out is kind of hard like when i did agility when i was doing training for it i used to zoom out like this and the hitboxes on those things are very temperamental so if we cross over this one hold on are we going to be able to get there still because i want to get down to here There's a rock there. I think I made a mistake. Yes. Okay, I made a mistake. We go back, we go down the bottom, we go across, and then we can go across this rock over here. Because I didn't see that rock on the map. That rock wasn't there on the map. So we can actually cross this river at that point. So we'll go back. We'll click down here. Nope, we've got to get off this route. And if I click over here... Will you path us there? Yes, it will. Okay, so we're going to path over there, which is good because I don't have to click for a while. I wonder how many clicks I've actually done throughout this whole video. That'd be interesting. But Anachronia, the place of a lot of big lore things. A lot of big lore things. We've got the needle stuff. We've got the lab stuff. We've got um, Skeka. We've got Raksha. Lots and lots of lore things have happened over here on Anachronia. And the diversity of the uh, fauna too, like you've got the different um, sections, so you could say, like this kind of desert looking section over here, it looks very deadly, it looks very um, more primitive, it looks more primitive than this area here, this area looks like it's more evolved, it looks like it's less deadly, which is obviously not the case because we know the flowers over here are freaking brutal, um, but yeah, you've got the dinosaurs over in that area that roam with all the spikes on them, and it's nice to have the dichotomy, I don't know what you call it, where there's two things that are polar opposite like that. 
but it'll, it, it's a nice addition to have both of them side by side. All right, let's walk around the agility course. And we're going to go through all of this again, go down through these plants that, again, the plants are very deadly looking in this area and the level of them, 228. Imagine being like back in the old days and you see a creature 228. That's not a boss. It's just a random ass creature that's on the ground. So we'll go through the gap. I was thinking that we could go this way, but I didn't see that rock there. And I hope we can still cross it. I hope we can cross it because if we can't, I've just wasted my time again. And I don't know how we're going to get to the most eastern part, but we're trying, we're trying to get there. So if we go right, we go around and we should be able to, fingers crossed, go across this rock. Is that a bean? Fertile soil. Yeah, it looks like a bean. Hmm. I wonder what that's used for. Examine. You can use a special type of seed here. Okay. Cool. Good to know. So there's something I learned. There's a new seed that I have not ever seen before. There's the vines, jungle vines, if you wanted to cut the idle head. Yep. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Good things. Good things. All of these content updates. Good things. Because, yeah, that's the one thing that I hated about back in the day was there was usually only like one way to train skills. And that's it. The whole way through. Very meta. Across this agility shortcut here. Is this part of the agility course? I think it is. Maybe the agility was going to take us here. I think the agility course was. Yeah, because we come down the vine over there. Okay, so it did come this way. It did come this way. The agility course was going to work. I thought so. But that's okay. So do we want to go up or down? We want to go to the most eastern part. Which is technically here. So we're going to go down, technically down here. All right, grow down the bottom. And we could finally finish this pointless journey, walking across the entire map of Gillinor, literally walking, no sprinting, no running, no surging, from one side to the other. And we finish off next to the Shadow Jad Jadinko. So we started with Slayer creatures and we've ended with Hunter creatures. So at least, you know, we're not ending and starting without creatures. We're not alone. And there's this giant shark looking creature add that back to the game whatever the hell this is this dinosaur thing yeah add that back to the game that looks sick but there you go guys that has been my walk across Gilanor. if you enjoyed this video if you freaking stayed till the end um let me know in the code word down below let's put a code word in the comments if you guys have watched to the end let's go skull shark if you if you guys have stayed because i want to see how many of you guys have stayed to the end put that in the comments down below but my name is jim this is a pointless video, hope you enjoyed, and I will freaking see you later.